We've got a few things going on with this raw water intake strainer for an air conditioning unit. First off, you'll notice that it has a composite fitting screwed into a bronze uh, strainer. This is not desirable as the two have uh, different expansion and contraction ratios and the plastic fitting could crack. A quick shine of the light shows that the hose is also badly deteriorated, cracked and dry rotted and is in need of immediate replacement. And as we look over on the other side, we see we've got running rust, uh, stains, leaks, drips. That's your boat's way of telling you something's going on. In this case, it's corrosion of the globe mounting screws for the strainer itself. Okay, so here's a common problem that I see on many marine engines. Uh, we're looking at the back of a starter unit. The solenoid right there, the starter solenoid where the positive terminal from the battery connects, right there you should have a boot, a protective boot on that. That just prevents it uh, from accidental shorting if you, you know, you touch it with your watch or a wrench or something. So today's find is loose mounting hardware for this bobstay fitting. If you look closely, you can see there's a gap between all of the bolt heads and the bracket there, which indicates the need uh, for all of them to be properly torqued. So here we have today's find. The owner removed an inoperative generator a couple of years ago, and he left the uh, exhaust system in place, uh, but he didn't cap it or remove it. And also the hose beside it is the old raw water intake for the generator. Both of these should be removed and the through holes and seacocks properly capped to prevent water from entering the vessel. Today we're looking at problems with vinyl coated lifelines. Uh, as you can see here where the vinyl is cracked, we've got water intrusion and corrosion. And as we follow it back to where it's at the stanchion, you can also see a split in the uh, coating and corrosion and chafe there as well. The top lifeline on this particular boat is uncoated wire or bare wire, which is a much better choice than vinyl coated lifeline wire because among other things, it's much easier to inspect. Improperly uh, terminated wires are never a good thing. Uh, particularly if uh, they're energized, in which case they can uh, produce problems ranging from shock hazards uh, to even a fire as they bounce around arcing and sparking. One thing to look for when inspecting sails, particularly older ones that are getting a little long in the tooth, is thread condition. Uh, you can see on this one here, the thread damage is the threads are popping and loose, so it indicates at the minimum a need for a tune-up. Leaks and stains are your boat's way of telling you something's going on. The run and rust you see on uh, both sides of this bowsprit indicates corrosion, either for the mounting hardware of the bowsprit or the welded tab or foot of the bowsprit itself. So here's something I see pretty often. You've got a fire extinguisher located in a hanging locker or some other storage locker, and it's not easily visible. Uh, you should have a fire extinguisher inside sign outside of every locker that has a fire extinguisher inside. And the extinguisher should also be properly mounted. The sacrificial anodes on this propeller shaft are completely gone, meaning that there is no protection against galvanic corrosion. You'll also see with the bronze strut that it has a pinkish color to it. Uh, this is an indication with bronze that it has suffered from galvanic corrosion, a process called desinctification. So today's find, two carbon monoxide detectors located inside the navigation station desk. Why are they in here? I always hear a lot of excuses from the owners. Uh, you know, these things, they're always going off. They must be defective. Well, yeah, or maybe they uh, are detecting carbon monoxide, right? Another thing to look for here, date of manufacture. Carbon monoxide detectors, smoke detectors, they all have a limited lifespan and have to be replaced at intervals recommended by the manufacturer. Okay, so what we've got here are two through holes and seacocks that are located just below the waterline. Um, if you have seacocks or through holes like this, they should either be utilized or they should be properly capped. This is what a unused seacock through hole below the waterline should look like properly capped. So here we have an example that shows the good and bad with regards to fuel filter installations. Uh, the unit on the left here that has what's called a flame impingement bowl. Uh, the one on the right does not. The reason these metal bowls are installed is because the clear plastic globe of the filter does not meet fuel system component burn time requirements. 
Why are they installed beneath the filter? Well, the thought process is if fuel spilled into the bilge and caught fire, then the metal bowls would allow the plastic globes to meet the minimum component burn time requirements. The best time to look for blisters on a hull is right after the hull has been power washed and is still wet. If you line up the sunlight and kind of walk along it, you'll see the blisters pop out uh, and are much more easy to spot, just like these blisters here. So here's a problem I sometimes find with older Dutchman flaking system installations. The sail cover has to have a slit in it to allow the monofilament to pass through it. And sometimes the owners forget to close these or make sure that they're properly closed or they fail to close due to age. And then you get UV damage to the sail, rot and damage around that area. So here we have a new anchor road that's been installed. Uh, however, it's still wrapped and tied up. Uh, there's no way in the world you'd be able to deploy this uh, if you needed it in a hurry. So what you got to do is, uh, of course, unwrap this uh, storage wrap here and uh, flake it out in the anchor well or anchor locker so that it can be easily deployed. So here's a common problem I see. You've got your anchor shackles. Um, swivels, anything that has a screw pin shackle on it, but they're not properly moused um, against uh, unscrewing. So you have the mousies. Mouse means, just means secure with stainless steel wire, wire ties or something to keep them from unscrewing. So all positive terminals for the batteries, all positive battery terminals or posts should be covered. They need to be covered with these boots or a protective shield. If they're in a tray like this, if they're in a battery box, then the lid will suffice to cover it. This just prevents you from uh, accidentally arcing and sparking if you hit it. So you can see here, yeah, we've got the cover here, but this is the primary post and it is uncovered. So for this installation to be correct, you would need a something to cover this, a, uh, a shield, non-conductive shield or a boot that covers this whole terminal, not just this one part right here where the uh, the battery post or the battery connection is made. So here you have a typical sailboat propane system. You got two tanks. You have gauges on each of these tanks, but you really only need these here at the manifold. A quick look at the lines show they are badly deteriorated, cracked, and in need of replacement. And over here we have the remote solenoid. It is inoperative. Here I can see it's corroded and it needs to be replaced as well. So here's something I often see with lockers and hatches, which is actually a safety issue for the people using them. The cylinder arm here is too weak to support the lid. It's failed. And this thing would just drop right on your hands uh, or your head. This is actually a bait well. What you want to see is a support cylinder that provides uh, positive control like this one. You can see how it would provide some protection against the locker lid accidentally closing and smashing fingers and hands.